Okay, here we go with another round. The e-brake cables that we got aren't long enough, so that ain't going to work. have to get some new ones. going to start the wiring with the universal painless kit that came with the GTM. We're going to put that in here. I've done these before. It's kind of overwhelming at first, but you start with one thing at a time and it ends up starting to make sense. Been looking on the internet and I got these different wires mapped out oil pressure light, upshift light, fuel gauge, coolant temp gauge. And like this is, I found out is for the uh, cruise control, which we're not going to use. Up, upshift light we're not going to use so use a combination of what we got here we robbed a different clock so we'll put that in there because that one's kind of messed up and pretty much got the suspension wrapped up the brakes, we got the other caliper on over here. And my camera keeps shutting off on me. So yeah, there's the other caliper, we got that on. Took the hatch back off. We're gonna put the black on the inside so when the hatch is shut it'll all be black in there instead of the blue showing we'll get that done and yeah so that's where we're at today I'm gonna bolt the hood up on there just to get it out of the way and so mainly this weekend is going to be wiring I think Been having a hard time finding a windshield. Been looking clear over in Europe. And I don't know, there's a couple around, but they're like 600 bucks in Canada on the VW Vortex. The guys clued me in on that. But Next thing to do is get the grommets for the firewall. And this thing will end up being cut apart. First cut is to get the grommets loose. And then, you know, we'll be using different ends like for the wipe or the headlights. And so we'll cut those off, solder them together with heat shrink into the new harness there going to use this uh, when we put the dual carbs on this has something to do with the signal uh, for the spark and the distributor so here we go start to cut it apart and then we'll get the painless harness unwound and kind of eyeball it and I'm gonna go for it there's the black on the hatch so now when we shut the hatch and the rubber will go over that part of the blue we shut the hatch and you know you'll see blue on the outside in the gaps and on the inside you'll just see black There's the gauge cluster with all the wires kind of routed up through the dash. 
for the steering column gauge cluster those are the ones going to be up for the lights and some for the motor and then routing the ones back for the tail lights not much back here except for the lights and with the painless harness there's uh, some wires for a trunk light so we'll, we'll probably put a light back here too and that's all that's going to go back here And then the wires for the fuel sender and the fuel pump. Well, here we go on the wiring. My boy's got the back of it set up. We haven't put the corrugated black tubing on there, but set up. We're going to get a light for the back, and all the lights are wired up except the grounds. So that part's good. And I figure first thing I'm going to do up here is the ignition. And I've tested <coughs> these figured out which ones power up depending on the position of the key it's kinda of cool one of these powers up just by putting the key in so that's kind of an odd power source and then some of them come on with the key and stay on with the starter and like the one for the lights that one turns off when you're hitting the starter and then one of them, one of them actually is um, activates the starter solenoid. That's the bigger one there. That's for the headlights. And then various accessory powers, and then the power input. So I'll get those hooked up. Like one of these is for the uh, coil. Uh, one's for the starter. So these will be hooked up to different power sources from the ignition. And then we'll go from there. So I've been doing a lot of figuring out. Got all these wires kind of temporarily hooked up. And pretty much got everything working. I got the heater blower to work lights are all working I still got to run a, a wire um, for the wiper horn works, blinkers work uh, the dimmer switch works uh, and the blinkers work, the hazard light, lights work so pretty much a done deal got the wires sitting here for the radio um, this wire is for the oil pressure this one's going to be for a voltmeter and then we're probably going to get a air fuel uh, gauge you know with the wideband O2 sensor and put three gauges in those three holes right there <coughs> and it'll be nice to have the air fuel gauge to tune those carburetors and same thing up here 
got everything kind of mocked up. <coughs> and then what's laying down there is for the sensors. So now I'm going to get them all cut the length and routed in a good spot so they're not rubbing on anything and get it supported with zip ties or whatever it takes to put it in a good spot and then we'll solder and heat shrink all these connections so it'll be a worry free deal So oh boy, look what we've gotten ourselves into now. Me and my boy covered up this dash with fiberglass. And we'll see what happens, but the idea is to smooth that off and use a little Bondo and paint it. Make it look nice. The other one, which is still a good dash other than the spot that I ripped it. Um, Problem is the gauge cluster, trying to get some of the stuff to work, and uh, you know, and part of it doesn't work is the problem, and so I don't know. Instead of trying to find another gauge cluster, I think we're just gonna see if we can't fix up that other one and make it look nice, make it work. So that's what's going on now. Still been working on the wiring. Everything works so far. All the lights, the horns, the wipers, windshield washer, bottle. Uh, the wipers, did I say that? Got all that working. And got a couple gauges uh, to put in this pod here. Got a voltmeter, oil pressure gauge, and then a air fuel set up to monitor the air fuel ratio, which will be handy while we're doing the tuning with those carbs. So that'll be nice to have that. So getting ready to buzz down this dash. I'll have to cut out the vents here and then probably do a couple touch-up spots of fiberglass you know around some of the edges try and get that to where it's going to work out right. That was a bitch covering that whole thing. Uh, but it came out pretty good so we'll see how it goes here's the dash redid a couple of spots that were poking through it's just one coat of mat and then uh, ground it down fairly smooth ready for Bondo seems like it's stuck pretty good so as long as someone isn't banging on it should last should be good so now we're going to get some Bondo on there start sanding Bondo That turned out pretty good. We got Bondo on that yesterday. And then uh, threw some primer on it last thing last night. I'll sand that down and we'll spray some shaky can paint on there. Do it a semi gloss black. 
came out pretty good. It's going to look nice. It's going to look real good. Looks factory. Yeah, except for a couple of odd shape holes, but it don't look too bad. It'll look good with the vent in there. I have to get the the vents glued in there. And then we're going to put a uh, like a power strip right here for some power. And then I'll we've got the pocket for the glove box, but we never did have the door for this, so we'll make a door, put a lid on there for the glove box. Finish off. Got the dash in. Fits a lot better than the other one, <coughs> of course. And it's nice and sturdy since it's made it up better with the car.